guest today, but faith and confession. Faith and confession. If we um, want to start seeing the power of God in our lives manifest, we will have to start paying attention to what we say. What we say is so important. Words have power. Did you know that? Words have power. The, the, you know, that saying when we were kids, you know, sticks and stones will break my bones, but w words will never harm me, but they do. You know, that's a false statement. Words can be har harmful. But we often speak them as, as though they were meaningless. We, I'm going to watch my mouth a lot. I say silly, silly things sometimes. Yeah, because of, of you know, because of that, most believers at one time or another have been hung by their tongue. If you know what that means, hung by their tongue. Jesus certainly understood the power of words, and he had used them to change the natural things around him. If you got your Bibles, Mark eleven. I'm just going to read thirteen to fourteen and twenty to twenty-four. Mark eleven. And seeing the, the, you know, you know the fig tree afar off, having leaves, he went to see perhaps that he would find something on it, like figs. When he came to it, he, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. In response, Jesus said to it, "Let no one eat from fruit of of you ever again." Now, in the morning, as they, the disciples, and Jesus were passing by the fig tree was all dried up from the roots. Notice it was dried up from the roots. When you get healed sometimes, you get healed from the inside. Now straight away, as soon as someone lays hands on or you believe, you get healed straight away, I believe, but it may take a time for it to, you know, to manifest. And this is like the fig tree. Je Jesus cursed the fig tree and it started to die from the roots. You know, a tree usually dies from the roots, doesn't it, Lynn? I don't know. Anyhow, so now in the morning as they passed, they saw that the fig tree had died from its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, or teacher, look at the fig tree which you have cursed has withered away. It's pretty quick, wasn't it? I wish my wood kill on my lawns would act that quickly. So Jesus answered and said to him, have faith in God. A very important statement, or have the God kind of faith, some uh, translations say. For assuredly I say to you, whatever says to the mountain, he will stand you on the Mount of Olives at this time, and he used that as an example, be removed and be cast into the sea, and doubt not in your heart, but believe that those things that which you say will be done, he will have whatever he says. Therefore I say to you, Whatever the things you ask when you pray, believe that you receive them and you will have them. Very important scripture. Now this is not a, not a lesson about fig tree, it's a lesson about faith. He's talking about faith. You know, it's a lesson of faith and confession. Mark went on, on to explain that this verse wasn't um, limited to a fig tree and he used a mountain as an example. And, and that mountain in your life could be sickness, that's a mountain. It could be lack of finances or whatever. That's the mountain in your life. And Jesus is saying here we should speak to that mountain. So it wasn't limited to a fig tree, but he, he, um, he used the mountain as an example. But I believe it could apply to anything, as I've just said. Jesus used the word say or saith, Three times in verse 23. He's talking about saying it, saying it, saying it. He was making it clear that words have power. But he also said, have faith in God. You know, there's no use saying words if there's no faith in it. Each word that we speak must be faith filled. But, but it's, not, it's not our faith, it's the God kind of faith that works in us. In Hebrews 11.3 it says, By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the words of God, so that, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. 
You know, the scripture, you know, the scripture is not symbolic. God actually created everything with his words, with his mouth. He spoke creation into existence. And, and the substance of his faith manifested in, in what we see out there today. In Genesis 1.3, it says, Then God said, and, th and that's mentioned nine times in, the, in that chapter, Then God said, Let there be light. And what happened? There was light. And God said, and God said. So God spoke uh, yeah, creation into existence. Every, um, everything we see was created by words. And it, and it is the very word of God that holds the universe together. Isn't that, isn't that good to know? Global warming and all the other stuff that's come up there, that, that's not going to destroy the world. Hebrews 1.3 says, Upholding all things by the word of his power. The word of his power. Proverbs 18 verse 21, you all should know this verse. Proverbs 18, Death and life are in the power of what? The tongue. And those that that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. It's it's not only you know says that says that life but death as well. And it, you know it's sad to say that, you know but most words being communi communicated today are negative words. You hear them on the news all the time, you know Sky News, and it's pretty negative sometimes. Um, with these elections in the states, I've been been following in that. There's a lot of negative stuff being said. Words that do not bring about abundant life but cause more problems. God has given um, everyone a free choice but God's, by God's grace he has given man a free will. We have a choice. We can choose life, we can choose death. Deuteronomy 30 verse 19 says, I call heaven and earth as witnesses today against you that I have set before you life and death, blessings and cursings. Therefore, choose life, that both you and your descendants may live. God has given us a choice, but his will is that we choose life. But we can choose death. We can choose cursings, and plenty of people do with what they say. Notice that in, verse, uh, in this verse, it is God's will that you choose life. But as I said, we can also choose death. We had the choice. In uh, Proverbs 18 that I read, it says that we, lo uh, you know, we love it, uh, but those that love it, and that's you know, the power of the tongue on death and life, you know, we choose, we will experience the results of our choice. If we speak death all the time, that is what we get. Now, I'm not saying that if we just say, say it once, it's going to happen. But if you continually say things like, oh, my legs are killing me, I've said that. And, you know, your legs are not, um, not going to fall off if you say it once. Or, I'm so exhausted, I think I might die. Ever said that? Or, it's, um, it's flu season coming up, I guess I'll get the flu. You heard people say that. Well, COVID's come back on the news this week. I guess I'll get it again. Well, in the name of Jesus, I won't get it in Jesus' name. So what you say is important. My mum, you know, she was, you know, she was a Christian. She was a good Baptist, but she and, and she was always sick all her life, and, and you know, she believed that God was uh, teaching her a lesson. And I said to her once, I said, "Mum, you're a slow learner. You've been sick for years." Oh, it's God's will. And that's what she believed and she kept saying it. And she never got better. She died. You know, she was 92 when she died. But she was always sick. But she would always you know, speak it out of, her, out of her mouth. Few Christians realise the, you know, the place of you know, confession holds in God's scheme of things. Um, now, you know, there's a lot of people, you know, when they hear that word confession, they believe it's you know, confessing our sins, confessing our faults, going to the priest and con confessing our sins. But Bible confession is speaking God's word. So, you know, there is a positive side to confession and there is a negative side to confession. Now, confession, the word is 
I'm not going to say it, 367A for Peter's sake, it, it means to acknowledge. Declaration of the gospel, saying what God says, that's the definition of Bible confession. Now confession is, is stating something we believe in our hearts. It is giving evidence to something we know to be true. It is testifying to the truth we have accepted by faith. I'll say that again. The confession is stating something we believe in our hearts. It is giving evidence to something we know to be true. It is testifying to the truth we have accepted by faith. So faith and confession go together. Faith speaks. What do you say defines where your faith is? You know, you can tell a person's faith by what they're saying. You know, they might say, oh yes, I'm... I believe this, but their mouth is not not lining up with what they believe. In Luke 6.45 it says, Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. I'll say that again. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. So what's in your heart comes out of your mouth. So what's in your heart today? Is it healing and deliverance and prosperity and all the things that the Bible promises? Or is it doubt and unbelief? Because what's in your heart will come out of your mouth. It's it's um, it's always possible to tell a person is you know believing right by what he says or what he confesses. If it's wrong, that's what's in his heart. Um, if it's life and abundance, that's what's in his heart. So it's important what is in our heart or in our mind, if you like. Hmm. If his you know, believing is wrong, his thinking is wrong. If his thinking is wrong, it is because his mind has not been or not being renewed by the word of God. So there's all three. There's believing, thinking and saying. They all go together. You, you, know, you believe, you know, faith comes by hearing the word of God. So you believe, it's in your heart, then you speak it out. And look... It all starts with salvation in Romans 10, 8. You all know this. The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For with the heart one believes and under righteousness and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. So when you get born again, that's the, you know, your first your first thing um, in your Christian life is to believe in your heart, not your head. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord, and confess it with your mouth. And that's what I get people to do when I, uh, you know, when they come out for you know, for salvation. I get them to confess with their mouth. You know, they've already come out. They believed in their heart. They need to confess it. So faith and confession go together. So believe in your heart, which is faith, and, and say it with your mouth is confession. So that, you know, this happens right at the start of your Christian life. So it should flow through and be part of your life. Consistency. You must be consistent in your confession. You, know, you, you can lose your battle with words. You, know, you can say that you believe this and you know, confession knocks everything out. People start in faith, but a negative confession can start, start to short-circuit your, your prayers. In James 1, 6 to 7, it talks about a person who doubts. He may believe what he says, but his mouth you know, negates what, he, what he's believing. <coughs> it says there, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For he who doubts is like a wind of the sea, like a wave of the sea driven by the, tossed to and fro by the wind. He you know, believes one minute, the next minute he doesn't believe. He is one minute he doesn't believe. He's doubting, he's a doubting Thomas. For let that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is a double-minded man and stable in all his ways. So we have to be consistent in, that, in what we say. Yeah, you know, don't, um, don't say the wrong um, you know, the you know, the right things in church in front of the pastor, then go outside and confess something different. That should be consistent in your life. 
It's interesting, you know, the study Abraham, we, we talked about Abraham, his confession was consistent. You know, we first met him in Genesis 11 and his name was Abram. But God changed his name to Abraham, which means father of many, father of a multitude, it actually means. So um, every time he, he introduced himself, hello, my name is a father of a multitude. He was confessing that all the time. And, he be, and you know, he had no kids at the time. So how, how, how was he going to become a father? But he believed the word of God. The word of God was in his heart. God said he's going to be a father of, of a great multitude. The sands of the sea, the stars in the sky would demonstrate his, his descendants. And he confessed that till he, had, he started to have children. Now, people say that you, know, that you can be lying if, if you say that you're healed and you're, you're sick. Uh, uh, people say, well, that's a lie, you're sick. You know, there's symptoms there. When you are sick and you say, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus, you are speaking God's word. You're not speaking what you can see. You're speaking God's word. So it's not a lie. God's word is not a lie. So, so if you're feeling sick and someone asks you how you're feeling, you say that, I'm healed by the stripes of Jesus, but however, I've got these symptoms and I believe that I'm healed. It's, you know, we, can't, you know, we can't deny the symptoms. They're there, everyone to see. But by speaking the, the truth, which is God's word, you know, that's what we need to do. We, you know, we need to speak faith-filled words. In Hebrews 11 verse 1 in the Amplified, it says, Now faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of things we do not see, and the, and, and the conviction of their Reality, faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. I like that. You know, yes, yes, so we can have symptoms, we can have a headache or whatever, uh, but we speak God's word over it. If we speak, you know, the symptoms all the time, oh, I've got a headache, oh, I feel lousy, that might be a fact, but the truth is, the truth will always override a fact. So the truth is God's word. <coughs> Hebrews 10 verse 23 in the Amplified says, Let us seize and hold fast and retain without wavering the hope we cherish and confess and our acknowledgement of it. For he who promises is reliable and faithful to his word. That's God. So what do we confess in our lives? Now, you know, there's a couple of confessions here that I'm going to um, ask you to repeat. We, we, we confess what God has done for us in his plan of redemption. That's what we confess. Say after me, I am saved by grace through faith in Jesus Christ. That's a confession. I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. We, you know, we confess what God has done uh, through his word and his spirit. So you know, say after me, his word is a light to my feet. And a lamp to my path. To my path. <coughs> it is the only truth. It is, the only truth. It is inspired by God. Inspired by and, God. It and it is speaking to me. Say so this the Spirit of God dwells in me. And quick and quickens makes alive my mortal body. My mortal body. Uh, and we also confess what the Father in Christ. Uh, what we are in the Father in Christ. Say after me, I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. I am more than a conqueror, than a conqueror. through him who loved me. Through him who loved me. And we also confess what Jesus um, is accomplishing for us now at the Father's right hand when he is making intercession for us. So confess this, if we pray according to God's will, his word, we have the confidence that he hears us and will answer our prayers in the positive. And uh, last one, if we confess our sins, God will forgive me 
and cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Now, now we should be confessing those every day. I've got, got a list of things I confess. Yeah, you know, when I get out of bed or I have my prayer, I, I confess the Ephesians prayers, Ephesians 1, Ephesians 3, yeah, Colossians 1. You confess those, that's who you are in Christ. And it's speaking with our mouth. So the, you know, the, you know, the uh, conclusion to all this is God's word that is conceived in your heart, then framed by the tongue and spoken out of your mouth becomes a spiritual force releasing the ability of God with you. Father God, we thank you that we can speak your word and know that word is truth, Lord. We can speak your word and know that your word will, um, will overcome anything that we feel or see, Father God. We know your word is truth. So I just pray, Lord, this week that we'll take care of what we say, we'll watch what we say with our mouths, Lord. We'll think before we speak, Father God, and we know that your word is true. And if we have faith in your word and confess it with our mouth, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.